Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to go over a new opening that I've been dabbling with a little bit in some recent games with some pretty good success. And it's very different than the openings I'm used to playing. Uh, it's very aggressive. It's even explosive, uh, as I will show you in the game I'm going to review here in a little bit. Um, this opening is known as the Bishop's Opening. Um, and what I want to do is start a series where basically I'll show you this opening by going through some games that I've been playing. Um, and showing you how when you play against an opponent who doesn't really know the opening and doesn't know how to prepare for it or deal with it, it's an opening that can really be devastating. And it's also pretty fun. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, at the end of the video, there's also a pretty cool puzzle. So stick around till the end. And if you like the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. So we're going to get right, right into it. I'm playing with the white pieces, and this opening begins with e4. And after black plays e5 here, the bishop's opening is simply bishop to c4. This is a pretty solid move, opening move, but it's it's not too common. Uh, mostly you'll see white playing either knight f3 here, very popular move, or maybe even knight c3 here. So bishop c4 is, is not as common to, uh, if you're playing with black as something you'll see. And that can actually throw off your opponents right away because it's not that abnormal but it's something that they might not really see very often so right off the bat this could be an advantage for white here so there's a couple different responses for black here um the most normal one and the one i've been seeing the most is knight f6 it's a pretty standard developing move here and it's also attacking this pawn which is not defended so in going with this opening as i mentioned being aggressive here i'm not going to defend with knight c3 or pawn to d3 here. Instead, I'm going to play a pretty surprising move, d pawn to d4, which I know a lot of black players, a lot of players aren't going to be familiar with. Um, it immediately attacks in the center. And it also appears to be hanging upon here, which it, it is hanging upon. But as we'll get into in probably some future videos, black really doesn't want to take this pawn. It it's really leads to a kind of a dangerous position for black. So Instead of capturing the pawn here, black actually played a good move, which is capturing the pawn on d4. Now, we don't want to take right back with the queen, because that will just walk into uh, black developing their other knight with tempo. So instead, in this opening, we're going to play knight to f3, piling up another attacker here, developing another piece. Okay, So now, black goes ahead and takes this pawn. Because we're, we're still, even after, what is this, move 4 here, we're still not defending this guy. So black takes the pawn, but this is all kind of part of the plan here for white, believe it or not. So now we're going to take the pawn. Because black cannot just play knight to c6 here. This knight's under attack, so he's got to react and retreat with this knight. Now you'll notice when he retreats, we've got three pieces in the game. So we've given up a pawn in the center, uh, but we have developed three pieces, and he had to retreat his knight back. So we've got a lot of initiative here, and believe it or not... After black retreats the knight to this position, this is actually kind of a little bit of a mistake. And he's already in a little bit of danger. And we'll, we'll see why. It seems logical. But because he's attacking the bishop here, makes sense. But this is a tricky opening. So I castled here. And you'll notice black is already in a little bit of danger. Because the next move, if I play uh, rook to e1 check here, he's really only got one move. He, if he doesn't want to drop his queen, he's going to have to block with the bishop. And if he blocks with the bishop, well, he's going to be hanging this pawn here. And this is not only a hanging pawn, but it's really, really weakening the position around our opponent's king. This rook is under attack, um, and it really leads to a very dangerous situation. So, I think black actually noticed that here, because he played the move f6. Realizing that if he has to block with the bishop here, he doesn't want to hang this pawn. So this is a pretty decent move, um, but like I said, black was already in danger. The best move here, actually, for black would have been to try to trade queens. It would mess up his pawn structure here, but like I said, he's in, in a dangerous position, and trading the queens here would be um, would be something that he should look for. He should have looked for, but okay, he plays f6, and I now I, I just hit him with rook e1 check, and he plays the only real move available to him if he doesn't want to drop the queen, which is blocking with the bishop. So now we can see, again why f6 was an important move here to uh, defend this pawn. Okay, so I thought for a little while after this move, and 
at this point i'm you know obviously i'm out of an opening preparation here for the for this uh opening so i played knight to c3 and the idea that i had was simply to start piling up pressure on this bishop this bishop right now only defended by the queen so really not defended <laughs> very well um and so that was the plan and you you might notice okay well maybe could black just play c6 here but if he plays c6 this uh knight is actually going to be hanging because this bishop is pinned so this bishop is not actually defending any pieces and this comes i think this comes into light a couple more times throughout this video okay so again four pieces developed here just really have a quite quite an initiative based on the opening okay black plays knight to c6 at this point so i've got to move the queen somewhere and i move the queen to g4 so i move the queen to g4 because i'm threatening another pawn the pawn here he can't move the rook to defend because the bishop is guarding that square. So I'm just looking to see him kind of make some more weakening moves around his king. You'll notice that this king cannot, he cannot castle queenside anytime soon. He's got all the, he's got pieces in the way. Uh, this queen can't move until this pawn moves and this pawn can't move because of this knight. So he's really cramped. Uh, so he can't castle queenside and he also can't castle kingside because of this, this bishop. And especially after this move, even if he could castle kingside, let's just say this bishop for some reason wasn't here anymore. Um, because he's made these pawn moves in front of this, this kingside, it's very dangerous to castle in this position because of the weaknesses that I've already uh, exploited. Or not exploited, but created based on some of the moves here. Okay, so now after that, I play bishop to c6. Obviously, after this pawn move, he's no longer defending that square. And we've got bishops... Totally in control of all these squares here. So this king cannot go anywhere at this moment. And as we already said, he also can't castle. So uh, lots of king danger already in the opening here. Okay, now black plays knight to f5 attacking this bishop, which is currently undefended. And I simply move the queen to f4. So I, I am defending the bishop here, but what I'm also doing, again, because this bishop is pinned, if this knight happens to move, I'm x-raying this pawn, and after I take this pawn, I will also be attacking the rook here as well. So it's just uh, another threat. Okay, so black plays pawn d6. I think he was trying to just create a pathway for the bishop. Um, he really needed to develop some pieces here, but this is already just a very dangerous position. So I finally ended up playing uh, knight to d5 here kind of following through with the plan I had right at the very beginning. This is something I probably could have done a little bit earlier in the game, but at this point, it's it's still working pretty well. I, the knight is defending right now, but just piling up pressure. So at this point, black makes a mistake, and he takes that bishop on h6. And already, we are on move. That was the black's 12th move of the game. I'm going to pause here. I'm going to stop. I'm going to let you guys look at this position here because we've reached the puzzle already. There is a forced checkmate in two. So two moves to checkmate Black's King for white. I'll give you guys a second, pause the video, think about it, and then we'll go and I'll show you guys what's how to do this. All right. Okay. So sticking with the theme about this bit pinned bishop here. You may have remembered that this pawn is under attack actually from two pieces and it's not defended. That the key here is to capture with the knight because the knight hits with check. So the king's got to react to this. Again, this guy's pinned. He cannot take the knight. And also this square is attacked by the knight. So we're forcing the king into a very specific position. Not only does this knight also check the king, but it also reopens up this diagonal here for the bishop. So there's only one square for the king to go to, and that is f8. And now we deliver a simple checkmate, queen to h6. So we've got the king checked. He can't go back to where he came from because of the knight. And uh, obviously this is also guarded by the knight and the bishop, and this is guarded by the bishop. So this is checkmate. And it's kind of nice to see all three of these pieces working so well with each other here to deliver the checkmate when... All these pieces for black are still on the board. Um, I think this just goes to show, I really wanted to show you guys this because this opening really created this confusion and this chaos in, in 
uh, you know, for black here. And I thought it was a really good introduction to the opening. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is just notice this bishop. This bishop, who really was instrumental in delivering this checkmate here, has not moved since since move two. I moved him right on the second move, and he hasn't even budged. So, so that was kind of interesting. Um, yeah, so that was really it for the video. I hope you guys liked that, and um, I will see you here next time.